Hey, Ryan. Go. Hey, Sean. How's it going? Good, good. I had uh, another question for you as I was digging into Iceberg. So I ran across this notion of hidden partitioning. I'm not sure if I really understand it. I was wondering if you could kind of run through it briefly for me. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's fun. I was just working on the uh, um, projection code, which is related to hidden partitioning in the, the Python version. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. So hidden partitioning um, is the idea that rather than forcing users to uh, derive partition values and interact with those directly, the table should just handle that all um, through configuration. Mm. So let me give you a, a quick example with Hive. So in a Hive table, say you have a, an events or a logs table. And each log event has some timestamp when it happened, right? Okay. Well, what you want to do is group that data or partition it by, say, date that it happened. So that when you're querying, you can go look for days that are, you know, contain the period of time or the logs that you want uh, and not read the entire history of logs in that table, right? Okay. Well, what Hive would do is you have to take your log timestamp, convert that to a date, and then that date column becomes something that you interact with forever, right? Mm -hmm. So you basically create this, you know, somewhat duplicative column. Um, you say, hey, this column is special because it actually represents a directory in the file system that we have to list. Um, and then forever, when you go and filter the table, you have to remember, oh, I'm actually looking for logs on these dates and not just logs between, you know, two, two timestamps, if that makes okay. sense. What Iceberg does differently is we just bake all of that into the format as configuration. And so rather than adding this extra, you know, log date column, we just keep track of that as a relationship between the uh, log timestamp column and how the data is stored. So we basically say, okay, well, we're going to partition this table by the date of the log timestamp column. Um, and keeping track of that relationship is really important. For one, it means that when you go configure the table and create it, um, you tell us what to do and we can just do that uh, <laughs> everywhere. So rather than having every person that writes into the table or whoever's maintaining that write job um, deriving dates from timestamps, mm -hmm. Iceberg does that for them uh, at write time, which is really important because there are a lot of pitfalls that can happen so, for example, are you using the, the right um, time zone for that uh, timestamp to date transition? Oh, yeah. Many people overlook that, and it just uses whatever time zone you happen to be in for your session. Um, and that can introduce a lot of bugs. Yeah. The, the second thing is that by keeping track of that relationship, we can go the other direction as well. So. When someone says, you know, give me uh, logs from timestamp T1 to T2, we can go figure out automatically what, what set of files that is. They don't have to say, oh, I want T1 to T2 and also this set of days because I know where that is. Um, so it basically reduces human error um, tremendously on both the write and the read side. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. What a great feature. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. Um, and the the fun thing is that this is what databases have been doing for decades. <laughs> it's just that we never bothered uh, implementing it in Hadoop. Yeah. yeah, it's true. I mean, the concept has been there, but having it on the lake like that in those files, very important. Oh, absolutely. Well, great. Thank you. That helps me understand that better. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem.